Hello, the darkness 344 here. Today I'm here to explain conditional branching with a li with little to no computing terms as possible. <laughs> yeah. So, well, anyway, I was thinking I've made some good computers in the past. They're not amazing. They're quite simple actually. Like I've made a all right 5-bit computer in the past. I've made this 4-bit computer that only has add and subtract. I have made an ALU which will be able to support a lot more functions and I have a design uh, that will be mu an improved version of the ALU that I've made and it will be much better. Uh, that ALU I actually showed off in my 50 subscribers special though so you could check that out if you want. So yeah, so today we're gonna, I'm going to be talking about a uh, very very simple conditional branching. I'm still trying to get the grasps of it but it can be useful in bigger computers because it's basically an if statement. So what it basically does is uh, you normally have your you have your normal uh, let's find a good example. Okay, we're going to go back over to this computer. So you have your normal uh, jump to line command, right? So you have jump to line so and so. So on each each line, right? You have a jump to line command. So say like an like a basic program will go on line 0, once completed, jump to line 1. On line 1, once completed, jump to line 2. On line 2, once completed, jump to line 3. On line 3, uh, jump back to line 0 and it'd be a loop basically. So that's your, at, or you could just stop it there. That's your average program kind of on like a computer like this. But, uh, say you wanted to do Oh, once it reaches a certain number, I want it to jump to this line, not continue on the program or just stop. That's kind of hard because you need to add in an if statement and that is kind of hard. So what you use is a thing called conditional branching. It's, it is an if statement, like the very simple version of it anyway. So normally it would your ALU, right? So the very simple version of it, normally your ALU would go into a register called the flags register and it basically is a lookup table and it says if the AL, if can if conditional branching is on and the number from the ALU the answer of the ALU is 5 say then it would do the function that is put on 5 so say 5 is uh, add 3 to the number and it, this is a very basic example it's not a proper example say the answer is 3 Say, if the ALU gives an output of 5, it'll, and it's on, it'll do add 3 to, the, to your operation or whatever. So that is basically very simple what the flag register does. But since, uh, in this example, I'm only going to be using one type of conditional branching, which is if the ALU output equals 0, then jump to line blah 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 that's basically what I'm going to be using for this example because it's quite simple and easy to build basically all I've done here, this is a complicated version all I've done here is grabbed out the answer right, like here took the answer put it through an AND gate, right just to say, you don't need to do this, but if you want to be able to toggle conditional branching on or off, say you don't want it. Because say say your ALU was just the outputting zero, conditional branching would be on if it was outputting zero, but say you didn't want conditional branching, you'd have to be able to toggle conditional branching on or off. It's kind of annoying, but I mean, you know, it's useful to be able to toggle it on or off in certain circumstances. So here you can toggle it on and off with this. Uh, and gate it's quite useful so what we have here is basically what your program counter would look like hang on this actually I'm just going to use this example because it's much better so this is your basic com program counter you have your program on offline so the programs on the programs off you have your uh, what are they called the D flip flip your registers right your program registers, your line registers, I really don't know what they're called, I've forgotten what they're called actually, but they basically save the information from 
saying which line you want to go and you have your program this is your basic program and you put redstone torches down if you want to program there are different variants of this but this is a very simple version and i know this decoder is not the i think it's a multiplexer it's not the most efficient version but it was simple so we're going with it so what's going to happen is instead of having your say we're just going to go with four uh bits right because we're going to have four bits of addressable uh, lines which equals 16 lines in total if you count zero as a line which we are and then so you have your standard four lines which say oh, i want to go to line two for instance i want to go to line three i want to go to line five that was three that's three that's five five and and each time you put a new command in you have to of course update the clock which is just by flicking this leave over here on this example anyway and you'd of course have a proper clock linked up with a lot more logic and stuff so what it does basically if conditional branching is on it will jump to your other line specified if it's off it'll just jump to your normal line so here's a good example so this is conditional branching and this is normal. So your normal one would be, oh, the program would say, let, let's do a simple subtract program. So basically does, oh, input, input number A, number A, input number to ALU, subtract one, loop back to start, basically is what your thing. So it'd go from line zero to line one, back to line zero or something like that anyway so what you would that's a very simple example anyway uh, conditional branching however what you do you keep that program but you'd say when this reaches zero I want to jump to a different line to say the program's finished so normally it would go line zero line one line two then back to line zero right that's your simple program but conditional branching would do this however until your number reaches zeros so say it's from five it would go five four three two one and when it reaches zero it wouldn't jump back it would go to a different line instead so you could specify it to any line you want so oh once the program's finished go to line seven and do this operation instead or just finish the program it's quite useful so uh, what I have here is a simple example and this basically is a muxer that's what Benny's cubicles are anyway I'm not sure if it's a real thing or not and it basically says conditional branching on or off and what we can do is in a real circumstance that we want to use this we can hook up our ALU and the if it's zero then you'll turn it on output right up to this and that should be quite simple just like that and we might actually have to invert this there we go so if uh, we might not actually have to invert that I don't think we do so basically what happens is let's make a let's write a basic program for this so it's basically going to go from 0 1 2 then back to 0 so how we do that is on 0 we want to go to line 1 on line 1 we want to go to line 2 which is this one because these are your conditional branching lines so it goes normal conditional normal conditional normal conditional on the way I've based this uh, you could of course change this so it's all normal and all conditional which is I advise to do that because it's much simpler so from 0 go to 1 from 1 go to 2 and from 2 which is this line 0 1 2 I want to go back to line 0 which I do by leaving it blank so let's run this program so if we turn the program on as you can see it is on line 0 if we clock it the program actually on I think con no conditional branching is on we want to turn it off if we clock it it should go to line one if we clock it again line two 
clock it again, back to line one. Don't know why that happened. All right, maybe I've done the looping wrong. Oh well, but you get what I mean. It basically goes back to the line. It's basically a simple loop command. And that is probably because this is off. I think I've done my signals too short. Yes, it looks like I've done them too short. Well, I'm just I'm going to fix this by just adding repeaters here. That's probably why it was broken. So from line two, it should go back to line zero. There we go. So zero, one, two, back to line zero. So yeah, that's the basic program. But say, however, if the ALU output is zero, because it's a subtract program pretend, would of course have the actual program like built onto this, saying subtract one from it. If it is, if conditional branching is on and the output is zero, it will turn it on, of course. Of course, we're not gonna turn it on at the moment because we still need to program. It will jump. Of course, it would be on, let's say line, line zero. We'll put it on line zero. If conditional branching is on and it triggers and the ALU output is zero, then it will jump to line five, let's say. So zero, one, two, three, four, five, which will be this last line. And on this last line, we're gonna say, end the program by staying on line five, whether conditional branching is on or off. So line zero, we're gonna say jump to line five by putting in line five, which is uh, that, I think. Uh, that's correct. Hang on. Hmm. Hmm. Uh, yeah, that's correct. Okay, and on line five, of course, we're just gonna say stay on line five, whether it is on or off. So, Let's turn conditional branching on, and we're going to put some random number in the ALU just to make sure it doesn't trigger. So I think I've overflowed it. There we go. So as you can see, the ALU is not zero, so conditional branching is off. However, when we start our program, it will run fine because conditional branching is on but the ALU is zero so it will not do anything so say however the ALU was zero the output of the ALU was zero and conditional branching was on when we reach back to line zero right when we jump I mean when we trigger the next clock cycle it will go to line 5 and then on line 5 whether the ALU is 0 or any other value so whether conditional branching is on or off it will stay on line 5 till we turn the program off and reset it and that should go back to line 0 and I'm just going to turn conditional branching off yeah, I think that's off. Okay, so that's the very simple conditional branching setup in Minecraft. And you can put this in your computer. Like, it's very simple. It uses muxes just to choose between them. And I think it's quite useful in general because you can use it in a variety of things. And especially lo lots of programs use them, so it could be quite useful to build in your redstone computer. So yeah, thanks for watching. Uh, this is The Darkness. Please like and subscribe, and I am out.